Well, it's a windy day today, and there's a beautiful sight. Look at that. Oops, it's slowing down as I'm recording. Typical. Eh, it's been spinning the entire time. It actually is as slow as it looks. Well, at least on the display. My other camera made it look like slow motion. This one, at least on the display, actually shows almost a real speed. Right now it's barely... Yeah, it stopped. Well, it was spinning nice until I grabbed the camera. It's been pretty breezy out today, and uh, the wind turbine has blown pretty well. It's good because that moving blade will offset the power used by that moving blade in the tiny house on wheels. And it's sort of cool that the one will offset the power used by the other. I've got the wood stove cranked up. Um, warming it up after, a, after a, uh, a cold night leaving the stove unattended over the night and uh, I got the uh, I always cranked it up and heat it up hot burn off any creosote in the pipes I do that three times a day so I make sure this place is safe the uh, blue flame heater kicks on at night when the wood stove quiets down and takes up the slack maintaining a nice cozy 70 degrees in the tiny house on wheels baby cat is incredibly nervous though she does not like the new fan at all and last night she went ballistic on me I actually had to shut off the camera for a while because she was growling hissing and tried to make bloody ribbons out of me she actually attacked me chasing me through the house um, she is not happy about the fan not happy about the new construction and not happy about the light right over the place where she likes to perch. That makes her incredibly upset. So, but that especially disturbs her. I am um, definitely going to be getting a speed control on that though as soon as I can. But it does move the heat around in here nicely. Nice. That thing is spinning pretty steady today. Look at that. That'll charge up the forklift batteries nicely. That's just spinning. Oh, look at this. I have a baby cat attacking my arm. Hi, Fuzzy. She's still mad at me because she's upset about the fan, aren't you? Huh? Well, you're trying to get attention, aren't you? When the camera's out, she's a show off. There's my ugly mad cat, huh? You gonna grow on the camera for everybody to see how ugly you are today? Huh? Yeah, you're irritable today, aren't you? Yeah. You don't like that fan spinning in here. That is going and going and going and going. Look at that. And it's only um 24 foot high right now. That's it. It's about halfway up to the top of the trees. But it's pumping power into the house. That's good. That's a good thing. So that's 300, I think it was 300 or 300, 350 watts, if I remember right. But that would take a lot of wind to pump 350 watts. I'd be lucky right now if I get 30 to 50 in this breeze. But it's still, it's putting some power in. Charging the batteries. Well, I have some solar coming in. Uh, 41 watts. It's not much at all today. Batteries are at 12.9 volts. I have the internet modem running and the computer process and videos right now uh, so I'm using some power and the wind turbines kicking in the power and the Harbor Freight solar panels are putting out some power so I've got three sources of energy coming into the battery bank I have no, no way of measuring what the Harbor Freight panels are putting in and I have no way of measuring what the wind turbine is putting in here as well just I know it's doing something um, I gotta get some more meters and gauges hooked up out here I'd like to have obviously the MPPT solar charge controller shows me everything going on with the main solar panels but with my secondary solar panels the Harbor Freight panels I'm gonna have to get a current meter to show what's going on with them and also for my wind turbine I wanna have digital displays for everything going on in here so I'll be uh, shopping on eBay on the next paycheck and getting some cheap um, current meters. 
It is a bright and sunny day here at the off-grid homestead today. Starting to melt the slop off the ground. Starting to. It still it is treacherous out there. The uh, well, you can see the glare of it all. It is really dangerous. I can barely see. I can't keep my eyes open. Well, I'm gonna go out and make my second trip down to the creek. Let's see what we got here for solar coming into the new forklift batteries. Uh, we're looking at 14 volts and 123 watts coming in. Calm and dead outside so there's no wind. We have, oh there is a breeze. I'm looking at the weather station. Um, 3.8 miles an hour but it's not doing a thing to the wind turbine. It says we've got 41 degrees out in the meadow, which is amazing. Really nice. Well, I'm going to go down and get my water. I spent some of the morning working on video, trying to catch up because I'm a few days behind. I had a lot of visitors last week. Now it's time to catch up. Slightly out of breath. I just finished cutting and stacking that bit of wood there. That's a couple days of burning. Two, two and a half days probably. Maybe three. It's pretty wood. I'll show you over here. I cut a piece. I'm going to make, I think it's called the trivet. Where you put your, uh, your uh, hot pans on. I cut this with a chainsaw. I just thought the color was, was beautiful. I don't know if it really shows in this light. I don't know if that helps any show the color more and more washes it out more than anything but the color of this wood is beautiful and I just figured I'd run it through the planer a couple times because I have a little bit of a thicker edge and get that to an even thickness and then oil it sand it and oil it burn the off-grid project in it and I've got myself a uh, like a, a trivet I think you call it to put your hot uh, pans on now we're here, we've got no car, got no truck in the yard, that's because I couldn't get it in the yard. It is dangerous. I couldn't uh, safely get down here last night. I was a hockey puck rolling sideways on this glare ice last night. I had it in a four-wheel drive, but I just didn't want to risk it. I have to be careful walking. There's my old truck. Got it home. It runs. I found out that the O2 sensor has not been cut off. It's just broken off, and so I couldn't find it. The mechanics told me where it is, so where it's supposed to be, so I'll get it in there now. So I'll have the O2 sensor. I can't believe the thing runs without an O2 sensor. Well, I just can't believe it, but it does. It gets 15 to 17 miles to the gallon. The more I drove it, the better it got. Quite amazing. That's a pretty old truck. Sometimes people hit the horn and wave at me. Uh, give me the thumbs up sign. It's a, it's a classic. It really is. 1987. I love this truck so much. I really love it. Literally, I thank God every time I drive it. No joke. I really love it. It's a good tool, good workhorse. Some people noticed I was quite depressed when I uh, had to leave it behind on Sunday. Yeah, I was. I'll admit it. This is such a valuable tool out here. So, it's back. And I, um, well, I forgot. I went to the store when I, when I got the truck. I went... I was just outside New Pulse and I went in to see if I could get a engine coolant temperature sensor but they didn't have them in stock so I'm gonna replace that although I replaced it when I first got the truck that might be what's causing it to run rough when it's cold and the O2 sensor will definitely help so I'll be getting that here soon there's the remains of the tree I just cut now I'm leaving that part I'll show you why I just cut the branch off that was still hanging. The, uh, oh, it's dangerous here.
You can see where I was cutting. Yeah, I just cut off one branch, <clears throat> but I'm leaving the base. I, maybe I'm weird, but I'm leaving it for historical purposes. See the chain or the wire? That used to contain, that used to be uh, where a barbed wire divided the property line. And honestly, I can't bear to, uh, I don't know, I, maybe I'm just too, uh, what do you call it? Well, I forgot the word for it, but anyway. Sentimental? Yeah, I think that's it. But, I'll leave it there. That's a piece of history. That tree's been growing around that barbed wire for a long time. There's another piece hanging out of this old tree. A couple pieces here. Look, it's in the tree. Deep in the tree. That's been there a long time. <laughs> it looks like it's growing out of the tree. That's sort of cool. So, I left it. A little piece of history there. I'll leave it for as long as it wants to stand. It'll probably last my lifetime. Barbed wire growing right into the tree. So, that's it for outdoors today. I had some coyotes up there. It sounded like a dog leading a pack of coyotes. There was a dog barking and coyotes around it. I've noticed some dog prints in the woods. It has me wondering if a dog has joined the coyotes. Sort of had me a little nervous, but I have my chainsaw in hand. And uh, I don't hear them anymore since I stopped cutting. Well, let's go inside and stoke up the fire with the new firewood. <laughs>